Now in the last video, we talked about cardinality, and there was sort of an unanswered question that I didn't want to talk about, uh, mostly because on the first uh, go through, people tend to get a little bit stumped when they start looking at some edge cases, but, but they're actually really important uh, for understanding the definition. So in this video, we want to talk about what is the cardinality of the empty set. And from one point of view, it, that's an easy question to answer. When I said what the cardinality was for a finite set, it's just the number of elements in the set. The empty set has no elements. And so it seems pretty obvious that we should be able to write down this. The empty set has cardinality equal to zero. Um, and and that, that ultimately is the correct answer. Uh, the... Uh, the weird issue here is like, but the, like, how would we fit that into our definition, right? Is it even a finite set, right? We said, well, for it to be a finite set, uh, then we should be able to build a bijection with something of the form, you know, a uh, set going from one to n, right? So that's what we did when we said this cardinality of s was equal to n. That meant that there was a bijection between s and what we called this little n bar or the set of numbers one through n. So how do we fit the empty set uh, into this world? Well, you certainly don't want to be using this notation, right, with ones through n's, but uh, you kind of want to have a set with nothing in it, right? Like that's the only set with zero elements, right? And so it creates kind of this uh, almost paradoxical definition where you say, well, the empty set uh, has cardinality zero, or some set has cardinality zero, if you can build a bijection with the set with zero elements, which, which is the empty set. So for that to make any sort of sense, we have to ask, can we find a bijection between the empty set and the empty set, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> If we view this empty set over here as the analog of n bar, right? This is the, the set with nothing in it, right? So we might want to think of this as the set with no elements. Then can I actually build such a bijection? And uh, well, that just seems bizarre. Like, how do you build a bijection between a set with nothing in it to a set with nothing in it? So uh, this is where having a precise definition of function is very, very helpful. So recall that a function, okay, and normally think of a function as a rule, but we don't have to. So a function from set a set S to a set T is a subset of the Cartesian product of S and T. So remember, this is all pairs S comma T where S is an S and T is an T. Okay, well, that's not quite enough to make it a function, so it has to be a, a subset. So such that, and, and a little, how about we'll give a name, right? So a function F, okay? Such that uh, if S is some element of S, then there exists a unique t and t. So there's a unique element. This is going to be the unique image such that the pair s comma t is an element of f. Okay, which that's the, the technical way to write it. In our normal minds, we're thinking f of s equals t. So this is essentially just saying, right, all this down here is just saying that every element of S has exactly one image. No more, no less, right? You can't send S to nothing and you can't send S to multiple elements. Okay, fine. Can we do that for the empty set, right? It's particularly from the empty set to the empty set. Well, I need to now look at the Cartesian product of the empty set with itself. So this is all pairs of elements, S comma T, where S is in the empty set and T is in the empty set. Well, what the heck does that mean? If 
the, you have the empty set, how do you have an S in it? And the answer is you can't. You, similarly, you can't have a T. So we can't build any pairs. There are no pairs of elements, which means there are no elements in this set, which means this is, again, actually exactly the empty set. Ah, okay, so the Cartesian product of the empty set with the empty set is, again, the empty set. Okay, somehow that makes sense, right? Like 0 times 0 equals 0. Okay, now to get a function from the empty set to the empty set, we need a subset of the Cartesian product, which means we need a subset of the empty set. What? It doesn't have any subsets, does it? Well, it does. It has one. The empty set is a subset of itself, right? Every set is a subset of itself. Okay, so the only function is the empty set itself. So the only function from the empty set to the empty set is <laughs> the empty set. Okay, so you might call it the empty function. Right? Now, this is so weird, right? We're writing the empty set going from the empty set to the empty set. It's just bizarre. Okay, fine. So we have this function, this empty function, right? Empty function. Now, is it a bijection? <laughs> weird. Okay, well, what would it mean to be a bijection? It needs to be injective and surjective. Okay, so is the empty set as a function injective. Well, for it to be injective, that would mean that every element in the codomain has at most one preimage. Well, there are no elements in the codomain. So it is absolutely true that every element satisfies, well, whatever property you can think of. Yeah. So it is injective since there are no elements to have pre-images. <laughs> is it surjective? Oh, now this, see, this seems harder, right? Because surjective says you have to have at least one pre-image, and it, there's definitely not going to be any pre-images. But remember what it says. Every element in the codomain must have at least one pre-image, and there are no elements. There are no elements to have pre-images, so it is also surjective. And so the empty function is bijective. So in fact, there is a bijection between the empty set and itself. And so this generalizes our definition a bit. This makes it make sense to say the cardinality of the empty set is zero and the empty set is a finite set.